What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the Ground Armored Tank. It was manufactured by Bactoid Armor Workshop, the company that produced the Armored Assault Tank and the Multi Troop Transport. Its ridiculous cost of 300,000 to 500,000 credits was around three times the cost of the MTT, or seven times the HMP droid gunship. It had about the same dimensions as the TX-130 Sabre tank, with a length of 8.2 meters, or 27 feet. It was a Darth Maul shorter than the AAT. And at 6.15 meters, or 20 feet wide, it was about half the width of the HMP. At 2.4 meters, or 8 feet tall, it stood just a bit higher than a Wookiee, or a quarter the height of the ATST. And for our standard land vehicle comparison, it was about one-fifth the length of the Jawa Sandcrawler. For some real-world comparisons, it was about one and a half times the length of an Escalade, and about a meter shorter than the M1 Abrams, with a nearly equal height. Its top speed of 130 km per hour, or 81 miles per hour, made it more than twice as fast as the Armored Assault Tank, but still slower than the Republic's TX-130 Sabre Tank. Its armament was also weaker in terms of laser cannons, with just two medium laser cannons, compared to two heavy laser cannons, and a medium twin laser turret, but the GAT had a greater payload of missiles on board, 24, compared to the TX's 16. Like the Confederacy's use of droid brains and their starfighters, this tank did not require any pilots, with a direct integration of its sensor array located here, which allowed it to respond to threats nearly instantly, while also having a greater accuracy than the organics. That being said, these droid advantages still weren't enough to keep up with some of the Republic's vehicles. The Sabre tank was much more heavily armored than the GAT, with this CIS tank being so light in fact, that it was even getting taken out by the ATXT. This combined with that ridiculously high cost, made it not worth deploying, even if it did pack a couple more missiles than its competitors on the battlefront. Instead, the CIS moved towards increasing the production of the Crab Droid and the Tri Droid, fulfilling a smaller, troop harassing unit, and larger anti-armor role respectively. The Crab Droid was nimble and heavily armored, allowing it to ambush troops from anywhere, having the ability to come up out of water, navigate through thick forests or swamps, or up and over the rockiest canyons. The Tri Droid might not make it in those areas, but packed 48 missiles, twice that of the GAT, and with this raised shooting platform and increased range on these munitions, it was able to operate like an artillery combat droid. At the end of the day, the GAT was not powerful enough to carve out its own category, nor specialized in roles that were better filled by these other, cheaper droids. As these tanks were destroyed, and not replaced over the course of the war, they were nearly completely eliminated by 19 BBY, and with the elimination of the Separatist Council, any of the GATs left were deactivated along with all the other CIS droids. So that's it for its history. The only cool behind the scenes fact is that it first appeared in the book Star Wars Crossfire, but was visually introduced in the Clone Wars video game back from 2002. It was since expanded upon in the Clone Wars campaign guide and the role-playing game Galaxy at War. So that's it for the Ground Armored Tank. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, and be sure to like and subscribe, or click on one of these cards if you want to see other videos like this. But most important of all, remember, if you have the word armored in your name, you better have some of the best armor on the battlefront. And the force will be with you. Always.